Hey there, Gavin Gitt here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm here with Justin Johnson. He's the man, product line manager at Federal Premium. He handles all of the centerfire cartridges, including 224 Valkyrie, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I've been working on that one for well over two years now. Um, centerfire rifle and all of our components, bullets and brass. So. Here's what I like about Justin. Justin actually hangs out online with his audience. He's involved. This is a call out to you guys on Facebook. Here's Justin. Justin hangs out with you guys. Now I'm hanging out with him. We're here to talk about Valkyrie. So it's been quite a ride, hasn't it? It's been it's been an up and down battle. You know, it's uh, something that you know we looked at from, a, from an engineering standpoint from the very beginning. And what we've come to see now is it's it's a roller coaster. It's been its ups and downs. You know, we've talked about the the 90 greens here, Match King, and and it was great and then it was not so great and now it's back to being great again. Uh, so it's one of those things where we're learning as we go. We're constantly evolving, constantly changing, and that's what this industry is all about, right? It's, uh, you never, you very rarely get it right the very first time. So we're continuing to improve on that and that's a testament to the new products that we have, the engineering and the R&D that we have on the new 90 green Sear Match King, yep. uh, and, and some of the new loadings that we have for this year. So. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't fully understand really what 224 Valkyrie is about, right? This yeah. is a specialty cartridge for a specialty application, and it's a hot rod. Yeah. You know, when you add nitrous to your V8, you got to be a little bit careful. You got to be, look, or Cummins turbo diesel yeah. guy, yeah. I'm monitoring yeah. my exhaust gas sure. temperature, sure. otherwise I'm going to melt my turbo, right? And so, what you have to know is it's about pushing the AR-15 out to a thousand yards and maybe yeah. beyond. And when you go to push a rifle platform to the absolute limit, mm -hmm. you know, this is a great reloading scenario because, yeah. you know, it's it's just very, it's very particular. Sure. So talk to me about getting back to what's happened over the course of the year. Tell yeah. me about sort of the product launch and then some of the challenges that have come up and then some of the ways that you guys have worked with the industry to address yeah. those challenges. Yeah, so, you know, the, the most glaring thing that we've come across is the 90 grain Sierra Match King. So early on, finding the right accuracy node and the, and the velocity and pushing that velocity, we were finding that we were having bullet integrity issues. Um, so being able to leverage the um, partnerships that we have with Sierra, for example, going back to those drawing boards, looking at thickening up the jacket, uh, getting a more concentric bullet, getting something that's going to stabilize a little better uh, over the long run, and being more consistent with it. So that's why we stopped producing that particular round. Excuse me. And uh, again, went back to the drawing board. So fast forward to now, and we've had that bullet in, uh, we've tested it, uh, we've given it to other manufacturers, the good people out there making guns, and we've gone back to the drawing board to really isolate what those problems were, and we're seeing marked improvement across the entire spectrum of that particular round. So you're gonna start seeing the 90 gains here, Match King, um, at a slightly slower velocity mode, um, you know, we're talking 2780, 2775, um, or 2675, and it's just, it's performing where we originally had this bullet to perform. Um, so you're seeing long range performance, you're seeing a bullet that's not coming apart, you're seeing a bullet that's, you know, the accuracy that you would expect from gold medal, mm -hmm. you're starting to see that again. And that's really what you want at long range, is you got to have, obviously, good precision, you know, re repeatability, you need a low SD number because obviously your drop is going to be amplified every additional, you know, proportional to the square exactly. of the distance. Yeah. Tell me about the chamber dimension thing. There was a lot of talk online about excessive freebore sure. and, and enlarged chambers. And I started building rifles for 224 Valkyrie. I think after that, I got one of the uh, PTG reamers that was to Sammy spec. Yeah. Tell me about that whole thing. Uh, so early on in the design, there the chamber and the reamer spec had gone through some changes, uh, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, there was a um, slightly longer freebore uh, reamer spec, and coupled with the 90 Sierra Match King, which ended up being a lot more jump sensitive than we originally thought, uh, in a rush to get barrels out and in a rush to make things happen, you know, the potential for a company to to use that improper reamer, that reamer that was out of spec, you create, you know, on the high volume game, you're creating a thousand barrels at a time or 10,000 barrels at a time. So that was what we saw originally. Um, but now, you know, fast forward a year and those, those problems are starting to be worked out. You're starting to see some of these other manufacturers coming that, that paused a little bit and came into the game a little bit later, not having any problems. Yeah, and actually that echoes my experience. You know, I built the bolt action Remington 700 and I built an AR-15, both with 24-inch barrels, yep. 
because I'm, I'm thinking I, I want to show the true potential of the velocity there. Yep. And same reamer, same one and seven twist, yep. same match grade hand lap barrels from Benchmark Barrels. Love you guys. Um, and both are shooting about 0.3 MOA. Okay. So I'm and and I'm still working my way up to the Sierra Match King. I'm waiting for some of those sure. new bullets and whatnot. Sure. Um, so if if people want to get into the game, mm -hmm. you know, what would you recommend they look at in terms of all of the rifles that are available? Let's start with AR-15. Yeah. Uh, so you know, some of the folks that have had it from the very beginning, you know, Cross Jeff Cross at Cross Machine and Tool uh, has had that figured out from the very beginning. You're starting to see Wilson Combat. Um, Faxton's got on the Faxton on the barrel side of the house. Um, uh, escaping me, it's my Monday. Uh, so there's quite a few of Excalibur, so some of these new uh, folks that, like I said, kind of paused a little bit and have it figured out now. They kind of we've worked through some of that old, old inventories, uh, the, the community, like the Facebook groups and the community as a whole, um, giving you that very valuable feedback. And that's what I love about this as a whole is we've, you know getting in on the ground level on these things, and we've been able to influence gun manufacturers, and you'll see uh, things from Mossberg coming out this year, and you're seeing things from Ruger, and even in the Savage side of the house, where we've taken all that, that information over the last year and made it better. Um, Savage has their new long range precision. It's got a 22 inch barrel, so we're looking at that, the, the velocity windows and really the true performance of those longer range bullets, um, you know, to each their own. At the end of the day, right? You got your varmint hunters, you got your long range precision folks, you got your 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 medium game hunters and things like that. So trying to appease all of those people in one one swing of the bat was difficult, right? And that's where a gun for the application and the ammunition that you're using. And that's where the 224 Valkyrie kind of shines in my eyes as well, is that you're able now to take that and, and really customize your platform and your ammunition and, and to what you need it to do. So like you said, you went for the the full-on performance, right? You get 24-inch barrel, pushing at the velocities that you need to to, to balance the long-range precision uh, application of it, and that's that that works great for you. And the cool thing with that too is, you know, you can lug a 24-inch barrel gun out into the field and shoot prairie dogs with it, right? Or shoot coyotes, um, you know, and still get that performance aspect to it. So, again, you know, we've seen it from 16. We played with 16 all the way up to 30, mm -hmm. right? And and it's one of those things where you know, you start to get velocity drop-ups over, over 26 inches. You start to dip when you start getting higher than that. And there's a few people that have done articles on that. And barrel yes, and Bill Marr, yeah. rifleshooter.com. He did the barrel cut-down yep. test, yep. and he's got a graph of the data. Yeah, so that's that's cool to see. Like, this for, for me, this is the first project that's the, to this magnitude. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and being out there and taking that feedback, it's, it's cool to be on this ground level and the guns, the, the stuff that you're seeing now and the stuff that you'll see at SHOT Show, they get a year under their belt to figure that stuff out and they're figuring it out. So on the topic of barrels, let's we talked about barrel length a little bit and I think you really have to just look at the data. You know, 24 inches is great probably for peak velocity and you can go shorter than that without a whole lot of drop, but t tell me about one in seven versus one in six five because I've talked to a ton of the guys in the inter industry and you know again we're pushing things to the limit this is a hot rod cartridge that bullet is spinning at an amazing you know RPM yep. and uh, you know my one in seven stuff is, is doing great up to 88 grains again I'm working up to the 90s still I've got a lot more development to do and stuff yep. like that but what's your take on the twist rate so uh, early on in our testing you know we've Barrel manufacturers from just about every barrel company in the world, uh, gun companies, we're noticing or we noticed that one would stamps one and seven on the barrel, and it actually there's a range of one and what one and seven actually yes. means. So, a majority of what we found is actually when it says one and seven, it was like a one and seven two five. So you're getting slower, and, and we all know that you know you look at you look at stability models and you look at all the things that say that 90 grain is going to work in a one and seven. But if you have a one in 7.25 in your atmospherics or what they are, and your at or below sea level, you know, you start adding the, the, those elements into it, mm -hmm. that you know, quarter of an inch in twist is, is going to cause that problem. That's exactly what I heard. A, a one in seven barrel might not work with a particular bullet, but a one in 6.9 yep. might push you just over the edge. Yep. And, that's, and we're seeing that. So for the companies that do the one in six and a half, that one in six and a half may be a one in six, nine. Mm -hmm. But if they, you're alleviating that problem. Sure. Um, so at the end of the day, six and a half to a seven, 
we in our test, we, we've tested everything from a six to a seven or to an eight mm -hmm. twist on these things, and we didn't see any quantitative like difference in that. So uh, it really comes into the bullets. So, like early on, we were going to do 100 grain fusion, mm -hmm. and in Minnesota, 20 degrees below zero, we were out there side testing that, and that's when we started to see those stability issues mm -hmm. on a nice 53 degree day. It, you can get a one in seven to shoot a hundred grain bullet, but the minute it starts to get toward 32 degrees, and then we started seeing those problems. So like anything else, you change on the fly. Yep. So that's the kind of stuff that goes into that. And I don't, you know, part of, and I come from an education background, so part of that is, you know, we need to get these words out and things like this help with that. And, the, you know, being on Facebook and being on these, these social forums helps to educate that piece and, you know, stop some of the bad information that's out there. Okay, so I'm gonna put you on the spot. You're yeah. building a rifle today for 224 Valkyrie. What's your twist rate? I'd go one and seven. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, and, and why one and seven instead of six five? Um, availability of bullets, you know, as you know, I would change my thinking if there were if, if people started to push the envelope more on the heavier side of things. Um, there's a lot of bullets between you know 55 and that that 85 or 88 grain round or even 90, um, and that's all you need, right? And now if you start to see more 95s, 100 grains, and people start pushing the envelope on the um, a six and a half would obviously work on that that realm, but until we get to that point, a seven's going to do what a seven is, and there's and there's plenty of them out there. Okay, so so let's talk one final topic yeah. on on barrels, yeah. barrel life. You know, we were just talking a moment ago about you got in the bolt world yeah. to 22, 250. You've got now 22 Creedmoor, which yep. is a super rocket speed yeah. Yeah. cartridge, and then you've got 224 Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. And one of the downsides of something like a 22 Creedmoor is your barrel life is going to be 2,000 or less rounds, right? If, if that. So yeah. you're looking at, you know, everything that goes into that anytime you start pushing pushing the envelope, and there's a chamber design that goes along with that, right? So you start pushing the envelope on the speed of those things, you throw erosion, you know, big, long, heavy bullets have a you know, bearing surface and all that goes into that. Um, and what we're finding is, right, if you've got a barrel sponsor, right, or if you're money is no issue you get you know people don't think about um, what goes into that right every time you pull the trigger there's money attached to the barrel life mm -hmm. uh, six millimeter Creedmoor for example we have some a couple of great offerings we got a new one this year but what people don't always realize is that you know about a thousand rounds 1200 1200 rounds is all you're gonna get on that right so you guys need a metal lathe and you need to to watch my content on chambering rifles because yes. that's the ultimate setup yeah he's gonna say you're set there buy, buy a blank and go to town but yep. it's it's and that's it that's just it right if you we know what the we know what the bookends are right you know six millimeter Creedmoor you know to put something in perspective we go through test barrels mm -hmm. right um, a test barrel for us loose estimate is we can uh, the the general use for uh, an everyday shooter is double what our test barrel give or take. Yeah. So we go through six to eight hundred rounds on a six millimeter Creedmoor barrel before it's done. Wow. <laughs> so that's one end of the book, right? Okay. And now we have 308, and we've had 308 test barrels in the plant for years. Wow. Right? You can't you can't burn them out. So you look at it from a um, that perspective, right? You got your two bookends, and Valkyrie falls in there somewhere. Okay. Like it's it's been a year. We're still working on it. I've seen guns that have 7,000 plus rounds on them and they're still shooting quarter minute groups. Um, you know, again, a normal everyday shooter, we're, we're still trying to figure out where the end, that end state is. You know, our test barrels are at about 5,000 rounds is when, four to 5,000 rounds is when we take them off the line from a uh, pressure velocity standpoint. Yep. Um, so that's kind of our internal threshold, which equates, you know, if you do the math, that could be anywhere from six to 10,000 rounds. Yeah, and I guess that gets to where some people are wondering, you know, why Valkyrie, specifically yep. for bolt action yep. rifles. Yep. And I uh, call it again to the Facebook group, a lot of great, yep. Randall Carey in, in the group there, a lot of great folks, a lot of great info. Um, they helped me with my magazine. Yep. You know, yep. I did a uh, an AICS 308 mag sure. with the Primal Rights conversion kit, and with everybody's tips and tricks, I had, you know, the thing functioning 100% from the get go. Yep. Um, why? a bolt gun well i think a it's fun yeah. and then uh if you compare it with something like 22 creedmoor or even 22 250 mm -hmm. which i recently built a, a, a rifle for um the barrel life is one of the key considerations and then the second is factory ammo that's going to get you on target yep. and that's and that's the things we got to weigh into when we look at a project or we look at in 224 valkyrie is you know a lot of that was unknown to begin with 
but you, 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 your punch list, right? Mm -hmm. You look at what you're looking to get out of it, how you want to do that, where you want to fall on that, and, and that, that's your balance, right? Again, under normal circumstances, a normal everyday shooter is going to, the life of their gun is going to be the life of their gun, and they may not ever find that the end of the road. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the bolt gun piece, and I own a couple of bolt guns in Valkyrie, obviously we test platform, our, our, one of our number one test platform is, was built on a 700 action, mm -hmm. the Remington 700, mm -hmm. um, similar to your setup, right? Yeah. And uh, um, it, you know, when you start el eliminating those, the moving parts of a, a, an MSR, an AR-15, and it really simplifies things, it's easier to, to find the flaws. If you can get something to work great in an AR, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be a great bolt gun rifle. Yeah. And it's application. Right, you know the six Creedmoor is a six five Creedmoor crowd, and you know we're not there to replace that. It's another thing. Yeah, and that's kind of what I found was my whole intention with the bolt rifle was I wanted to look at the pure accuracy potential and pure ballistic potential of the cartridge without the semi-auto dynamics. What I found was I put my daughter in front of the gun, first long range shooting. I mean, even at a hundred yards, I was working on her prone out, you know, building a position and all that. She shot a half an inch group. It's, it's become one of my favorite guns. That's, and and, and it, the, the capability is there, right? You know, we're at the range day shot show yesterday. We're talking 20 to 40 mile an hour gust crosswinds, 875 yards. More than one person that's never shot over 200 yards in their life come and get first round hits, second round hits, you know, three for three at 875 in a pretty nasty crosswind. And it's just the, the, the shootability of a bolt gun. Mm -hmm. Stable platform, you know, people can you know, see their own impacts, you know, so the recoil reduction that goes along with that. It's just, it's, it may not be for everybody. And you, when you talk to PRS crew, right? You got those that shoot dash and you got those that shoot the Creed Moors and kind of the, those hot rods. Mm -hmm. You know, you get that same platform and, and similar performance in 224 Valkyrie. Now you can train a lot more and you're not burning barrels. There's different applications for different purposes. And it's, and again, at the end of the day, why not? Yeah, Steve Lawrence from the 6.5 guys, I was talking to him yesterday, and he's definitely doing 224 Valkyrie this year. He's going to uh, look at the platform, potentially even shoot PRS with it. Sure. You know, and I think especially when you consider they were training with 223 rifles and then shooting stuff like 6.5 x 47 yeah. Lapua, yeah. now you could have one rifle and you could have that barrel that's going to last you five, six, seven thousand yeah. rounds. That that seems like a real streamlining on the whole on the whole gear side of things. Yeah, and it's and it's it can perform. We've we've plenty of CJ. Um, from that group, he, he competes with his gas gun with his CMT um, and does very well. Uh, so there's people out there doing it, you know, and you know, not just because I'm a factory ammo guy, but having those options and having having everything across the board um, and kind of takes that barrier of entry down. And you know, we talked about 22 Creedmoor. You know, if that continues to go to the route it is, it will become a factory round eventually. But you know, I'm in, I'm impatient, so and that's kind of that's kind of what leads me down those roads. Yeah. Right? No, that makes sense. So I want to touch on one more thing before we conclude, and that's the brass life thing. Yeah. So I just started doing the torture tests. Mm -hmm. I started with Starline, and I'm going to do Federal, yeah. and then I'm going to do Hornady to really take a look at. One of the biggest pieces of feedback I got from the reloading community was, "Hey, what about the brass life? We've seen this person or that yeah. person only get two or three reloads." Yeah. Well, I found that I got at least four reloads. I made my own no-go primer pocket gauge, sure. and I had some that lasted up to 13, okay. and I sent that feedback to Starline, and they're gonna take a look at you know, some of their statistical analysis and, and all that to see what was going on. So I'll, I'll look forward to talking to you about yeah. the federal side yeah, of that. Um, and a lot, so my take on it is that if, if you're getting 5,000 rounds out of a barrel, and if you're getting four reloads, just spend the money on a thousand pieces of brass and and your whole collection of yeah. brass. That's not for for a serious game like yeah. Valkyrie. That's really not that big of an investment. And, and your brass and your barrel will be on the same life cycle. Yeah. yeah, and that's you know from a component standpoint, we we've had our ups and downs on that road too. It's been like fits and starts. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been talking about the reloading or the component game for a long time, and that's bullets and brass and our primers, obviously, and even on the powder side. And we are the new kids to the block. Doing, like we're not we're a loaded factory ammunition company and for us to like now step back and, and be a component piece it's a huge learning curve right we're used to making factory ammo mm -hmm. uh, we're used to you know what does a reloader look for in their tolerances and what what's their expectations and how do we improve on that mm -hmm. and we've taken steps to, to improve that to strengthen our in we've had soft head problems on our brass for as long as you know the internet's been alive yeah. right and and we're doing things 
Um, we're pre-pocketing, we're, we're looking at more robust ways to, to make those components better. Um, and, and Valkyrie's been kind of groundbreaking for us in, in some of the ways that we make our brass. So we make, we make all of it in-house and there's in process improvements and it's constantly evolving, constantly improving. Uh, yeah. Because obviously at the end of the day, we, we are getting amazing feedback from the reloading community on this. You know, and if you look at some of the new offerings that we have, like our 80 and a half green burger, mm -hmm. that, that's, I mean, that was born of the groups, right? What people want, the performance they're seeing, that the balance between a, a decently high BC bullet, now I get a little more velocity of that. Yeah, and like the uh, Red Rocket yes. thing. I mean, these, these cartridges have their own names now that the, the community has kind of crowdsourced. And that's why I think it's great that you're involved, you're an enthusiast, you're a shooter, you're online, because you're able to tap into the community and crowdsource some of that product development. Yeah, and that's, and that's the cool part, being able to do what I do and be able to take that information and tailor things to a, a broader scope. Mm -hmm. And we've seen great success with it, right? And you know, people ask for a heavy hunting bullet. We got a 78 grain TSX, mm -hmm. all copper thing. I shot an antelope with it this year. There's quite a few other people that have, you know, it's, it's bits and pieces for that. You know, you're gonna see some cool stuff mid-year from, from Burger mm -hmm. um, that we were working with them on. Um, like the sky's the limit. And it's cool to be able to take that instant feedback mm -hmm. and, you know, we're a big ammunition company, so for us to move, you know, at a year and get the things think that quickly up and coming, mm -hmm. um, that's a win. Yeah, definitely. Well, this has been a great discussion. Yeah. I really appreciate the opportunity to to talk with you and to work sure. with you offline as well. So I will definitely continue to do so, and we'll see what happens uh, for the next year the, uh, with Valkyrie. So. Thank you all again in the Facebook groups for being a part of this yeah. and, and you guys have been really insightful and helped me on my own uh, personal journey with Valkyrie. So lots more SHOT Show content coming up. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications. Justin, thanks again Thank much, for, for joining me and until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.